Alright, hello. It's currently the year of the dragon in the Chinese zodiac. The last time it was the year of the dragon was in 2000. When of course the third installment of the much loved Sparrow series was released. For me it's a great game, but it does have a major flaw which I feel lets it down. Have you ever heard of the term too many cooks spoil the broth? Well, too many characters spoil my Spyro games. This video will be my thoughts on each playable character, what I like and dislike about them, and what caused Insomniac to make a Spyro game with a lot less Spyro in. So sit back and enjoy as we look at all the playable characters in Spyro Year of the Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> Come back when you finish Witch School, okay? Thankfully, of course, Sparrow is a playable character. This isn't some Skylander sh**. He controls virtually the same way across all three of the PS1 games, with a few minor changes. Thankfully, he keeps the powers he learnt in Sparrow 2, although that doesn't stop Moneybags from fleecing him some more. In fact, Moneybags holds captive four of the playable characters which Sparrow must pay to get released. Oh, uh, why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> I, uh, uh, I, I've got to be going now. Uh, toodles! <laughs> you could tell by this point Insomniac were run out of ideas on what to do with the Spyro character. So Sparrow doesn't really evolve in this game. He doesn't gain any new abilities and his character growth is minimal. The main story arc is more focused on Hunter and Bianca. When there are pure Spyro levels with no other characters, they do end up being some of my favourite levels. I hope you appreciate this favour I'm doing in letting you out. As good of you, mate. No hard feelings, eh? Right. After all, I'm just doing my job. <laughs> the first unlockable character is Sheila the Kangaroo. Each of the unlockable characters has their own homeworlds. Sheila's is inhabited by Silly Billy Goats. It is one of the more simpler levels in the game. Nothing for me to complain about, but nothing really to get excited over either. Out of the new characters, her controls are the most similar to Spyro's. She can kick enemies, similar to Spyro's charge attack, and she can stomp on chest and enemies like Spyro's head bash attack. Her main ability is the Spring Jump, which allows her to reach high places. <laughs> she has challenges in other levels in the game. The Fortress in Seashell Shore, which I honestly remember being way harder than it actually is, but then maybe I was just awful at the game when I was 7 years old. The side-scrolling section in Desert Ruins, which is good fun, and one of the better challenges in the game. But she also has the most frustrating challenge in the entire game, which is the bombing mission in Spooky Swamp. This is the third game's answer to Trouble the Trolley. Ow! I went boom again. Stupid idiots and the unpredictable patterns. Overall, she is a decent addition to the character roster. Hey, what are those things? These are the latest military hardware. DBX-9 rocket launchers, state of the art. Sergeant Bird, on the other hand, I just cannot stand. His controls are very clunky. This military penguin's homeworld is possibly my least favourite Spyro level in the original three games. It is the exact opposite of what I want from a Spyro level. If there's a way to complete the game without releasing Sergeant Bird, then I'd happily do so. But you do need him to also do three further challenges in the game. This includes the Tiki Heads in Molten Crater, I mean, who doesn't love a game of Hide Your Head, one of my all-time favourite childhood games? The much less fun game, though, is Find the Bones in Enchanted Towers, which is the only challenge where Spyro and another playable character are able to access the same area, outside of the speedway levels. Which is a cool idea. The final bird challenge is the Cat Witches in Charmed Ridge. A good tactic for this one is to save one of the stained glass windows for the finale, so if you're running low on health, you can regain full health with a skill point. But yeah, safe to say, not really a fan of Bird. I would have been totally okay if he was not involved in this game at all. <laughs> ben 
Danny the Yeti is the third unlockable character in the game. A man of many words. A lot of them fly straight over Spyro's head. And to be fair, over my head as well. Sometimes I have no idea what he's on about. With the humility of a wounded sparrow, I genuflect to my noble deliverer. Uh, it was no big deal, dude. His homeworld, as you would expect from a yeti, is covered in snow. He is much easier to control than any of the other characters, but he is very slow in movement. This homeworld does end up feeling a little bit sluggish because of his slow movement. But it's always fun to bully your little brother, who is never far from your side. He, like others, appears in three challenges, and two of them are among the hardest in the game. The infamous Bentley boxing stage, which I despise, but also the whack-a-mole challenge as well. Both of them very frustrating. Fortunately though, the third challenge is just a walk in the park. Very nice, lovely, relaxing time. Overall, a fun and interesting character. A good addition to the playable characters in the game. Anyway, I heard all about how you've been fighting the sorceress and her armies and kicking all that butt, and I just wanted to say, huzzah, yippee, woohoo! Wish I could stay, but my homeworld's been overrun by Rhinox since I've been captured. If you happen to see the sorceress, tell her I'll be giving her dancing lessons real soon, know what I mean? Agent 9 is the final unlockable character in the game. Found in Midnight Mountain, this ADHD monkey is absolutely bananas. Wielding a laser gun, I'd stay clear of this character unless you want to get shot in the bottom. Rhinox! Ooh! His homeworld brings back a familiar friend from the second game. As the professor guides you through the world, teaching you all of Agent 9's abilities. This includes strafing, sniping, throwing bombs, and all the best ways to shoot a Rhinox. Rhinox! His controls do feel a little bit clunky, leaving you open to being attacked while you try to throw a bomb or strafe. Overall though, a fun homeworld, although hiding gems in balloons above the map is very sneaky. His three challenges include a Doom style FPS section of the Fireworks Factory, which is among the coolest challenges in Spyro 3. A fun little Time Crisis style shootout in the Dino Mines, a little bit challenging, but also pretty fun. And in Haunted Tomb, where you take on waves of enemies. Again, another fun challenge. In fact, I'd say Agent 9 gets the best challenges out of all of the unlockable characters in the game. Hello, I thought you might be hungry. Thanks. Did you bring any chips? Unlike in Sparrow 2, Hunter actually helps Sparrow in the game. There are four speedway levels within the game, and all of them has a hunter challenge. All involving UFOs and farmyard animals, which is very curious. Look out cows, here I come! In Mushroom Speedway, you fly a jet plane, and are tasked with shooting down the UFOs. In Country Speedway, you jetpack around the farm shooting all the cows before they take out any farmers. And in Honey Speedway, you're being chased down the Honey River by a UFO and must escape before it abducts you. And finally, in Harbour Speedway, you must follow the UFO through the rings, chasing it down and forcing it to crash land. <laughs> These little challenges make the Speedway levels a lot more interesting. None of them are too challenging, which is also a good thing. And it's nice to give Sparrow a rest and let Hunter have some spotlight. Overall, I prefer him in Spyro 3 compared to Spyro 2, as he isn't working against Spyro, and his character arc with Bianca is a very important part of the story, as Bianca slowly turns towards the side of good. And we all love a happy ending, right? It's a sad sight, Sparks. Another noble warrior falls victim to the plague of love. <sighs> Just look away. Finally, we even have Sparks getting in on the action. Previously, he was just there to indicate Spyro's health and to pick up a few gems, but now he gets his own four levels. These are a fun bonus addition to the game. I honestly would play a whole spin-off game where you play as Sparks in these levels, as you fire your way through hordes of enemies and defeat four bosses along the way. 
just before you kick the sorceress's big, fat, ugly butt. Sparks collects four unique power-ups for completing the levels, such as picking up gems from further distances, breaking open chests, and the life-saving ability to locate them point to the gems which you may have missed. My only nitpick of these levels is they didn't get their own soundtracks. Sparks also gets a speaking role in the game, introducing Sparrow to each speedway. It was really nice to have Sparks be a more integral part of the game, as before he flew under the radar. So overall, a very mixed bag. While I do like some additions, I do believe having so many introduced in one game is not the best idea. It overshadows Spyro and takes the spotlight away from him. With a lot of new characters not being that enjoyable to players, I still do love Spyro the Year of the Dragon, but it is my least favourite of the original trilogy. And a big part of that is due to all these new characters. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know out of the new characters which were your favourites to play as. Am I being too harsh on Sergeant Bird? Let me know in the comments. But for now, take care and leave me alone.